Um, and because this is money, not math, I'm going to just do a quick uh, kind of uh, outline and then actually ask you a question. But yeah. in my world, right, I, if I want to relate the fight versus flight versus depression, I'll just leave it at flight is kind of those two being one in the same category. I find for many people who want to be more financially successful, who want to do better financially, who want to save more, who want to achieve their financial goals, they, they have all these wants and, they, and they, they're good and they're great. But unfortunately, the natural nervous system is either to fight it and say, I don't, you know, I don't need that, or I don't agree with you, or, you know, whatever it is, or run from it. I'm embarrassed by my situation. Um, I don't know who to talk to. I don't want people to know where I'm currently at. So I'm going to run from the situation and just hope it gets better. So that I, I find that happening often where people, when they finally do have a conversation, go, wow, that, you know, that, that was really a lot easier than I thought it would be. I'm really glad that I had the conversation because it wasn't as scary as I thought it would be. So from your perspective, you know, I don't expect you to be the expert in my world, but from, you're much more of an expert in the mental health side of things. What advice would you give people, whether it's the financial side or just trying to achieve something new in their lives, whether it's going to the gym for the first time, um, going to their financial planner for the first time or going, whatever it is, something for the first time. What, would, what advice would you give to those people on just taking that first step and even leaning into the vulnerability, as Brene Brown would say, rather than running from it? Right. No, that's an excellent question and, and definitely something that, uh, that, that plays, like you say, across the board anytime we're trying to get into a different sort of situation. So the other, the other side of this whole prediction machine is how those predictions play out in our heads. We tell ourselves stories about what's going to happen all the time, right? If we can accurately predict the future, right, we don't have surprises. And we can minimize surprises. We're much more likely to survive. Because that's how it has always been. Surprise, it can equal death 200,000 years ago, right? <laughs> A mammoth around the corner <laughs> or something. Right. Ah! <laughs> right? So, so if we're geared that way and we're, we're always looking, we're, 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 we have this, we, not just the senses that we're using to make these predictions, but we have this brain that's also trying to figure out what's going on. And so you wind up associating uh, different experiences with, with pain. Like maybe you were embarrassed in a certain situation or you felt shame or whatever. And so within that situation, you build this story like, I need to avoid those situations because there's pain there. Like, so you just start doing it. And you have this, these stories that kind of become your pet excuses. Like, you know, for, for working out, there's, there's a million of them, obviously, right? There's a thousand reasons not to work out. Um, a big one that I always hear when it comes to CrossFit is, oh, I could never do that, right? That's a limiting belief, and it, it completely shuts off um, a whole section of activity or whatever that you can be doing. So, you know, for, for money, it's the same sort of thing. Like, you look around, and it may look like everybody is super successful. Everyone has more money look at the nice cars they're driving, look at the nice house they have. They must have the successful business they have. So you get these stories in your head and you don't want to look like the one in the tribe that is at the bottom of the totem pole because that was not a good place to be in our, in our longer history, right? That's a good way to get picked on, to get shut out of the tribe, to get your stuff taken away, like who knows, right? So there's danger in, in feeling like you're, you're lower in that, in that social hierarchy. And the truth is that that doesn't happen anymore. Like there is no real lethal um, uh, consequence to being in a tough state money-wise. But unless we walk through that story and we say, okay, What's the worst that can happen? Why do I believe it this way? Why is this the way that I'm understanding the situation? Why am I not doing this thing when I know that it's actually what I need to do to solve this problem? Why am I letting this block? 
and you walk through and you start picking it apart. You ask these questions, you turn it upside down. You say, okay, so if I don't do this, what's going to happen? The, this, this path is going to lead to a lot more pain, actually. If I do this, what's the worst that can happen? Um, people might make fun of me for being, you know, in a tight spot, for making stupid decisions. You know, that's, I mean, there's a lot of things that we do that we, we know that we shouldn't do. And then we wind up creating these messes for ourselves. And we, it, it's, a, it's a tough spot to be in. And it, it can be embarrassing. But like you say, it's, it's talking to a financial planner. It's talking to somebody who has the skills to, to help you out. Like if you're in pain, talk, going, seeing a physical therapist, coming to see me, whatever it winds up being. There's a problem and you need it fixed. Talking to the people that know how to fix it is the way through it. But if you set that wall up and you don't let yourself go, because of X, Y, Z excuse, it's never going to get better. And then it's just going to cause that anxiety to go to the roof. Right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the real battle with everything is between the ears. And, and the more you, you can be aware of what's going on in your brain, in your heart, in your body, um, and, and question why those are there, like, where is that pain coming from that I'm trying to avoid? Like, was I embarrassed that I didn't have enough money when I was in fourth grade to buy a thing at the concession stand when everybody else was? Like, I mean, there's these silly little things that your, your nervous system will latch onto. Like, this is something we need to remember in the future. <laughs> um, and, and you do enough digging and you find those and you, you just take them apart. You got to get rid of them. And then you replace it with, Asking for help actually will get me what I need, and it will be a good thing. That's how I actually avoid pain, whatever, right? Um, I'm no expert in this. I've got a lot of these things myself that I'm working through all the time, but that's the only reason that I can talk about it because, you know, same with, with physical health. A lot of these things that, that I've dealt with are things that I've, you know, these are problems that I've come up against and I've had to solve, either for me or for someone else. Um, and that's, that's really the root of it. You have to figure out where, where this story is in order to get past it. Absolutely. So it's just walking through and kind of being, being honest with yourself and having the conversation, if I heard you right, and um, understanding. To a certain extent, it's just saying, who gives a crap what other people think this is what's going to be best for me. At least that's the way I say it to myself. 